take a look at G, G, M, D, A1, worksheet 5. This is where we get into area of regular uh, polygons. Now, I will say this, this is important, uh, a nice piece of review or even introductory to regular polygons because when we get to volume, we're going to look at the volume of a hexagonal prism. If you can't find out uh, a hexagon's area, you're not going to find out uh, a, a uh, hexagonal prism's volume. So let's talk just some theory and then we'll get to the Elmo to show you some examples and the development and up closer on a little more exacting looking diagrams of what I've drawn here. But one thing about uh, regular polygons is they, they can all be inscribed internally um, in a circle. And because of that, there is some language that comes with that that's actually uh, common. In other words, there is a center of each of these shapes. And it's also the center of that circle. So you have centers. And then you have radii. And that's what you would expect it to be. It would be from center to uh, vertex in the case of the regular polygon. But center to circle, uh, obviously, is radius. So those are R's. Let's put in our R's. And um, the other thing, I guess, that matters a bit is something called the apothem. At least that's what I call it, or the West Coast calls it. Um, it may be different. I've always wondered about that one. That can be said differently, maybe in different classrooms. But um, we're going to drop down what's called the apothem, label it A. And it is basically the distance from the center to a side. And it's always a perpendicular value because the distance from a point to a line is always, the shortest distance is always perpendicular. So these little triangles get formed inside of each of these regular polygons. Now, what this is is the blown up version of it, and again we'll look at it a little bit closer, but what I want you to understand is that when you divide this shape into um, three equal parts because that's what a regular polygon would do here. These angles would be 120 each because 360 divided by 3 is 120. So when I drop the apothem down, that angle of 120 gets cut to be 60 degrees. And guess what's formed is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. A nice piece of review for us. So, and it's in this format, 60, 30. Now, this is the apothem, and this is the radius. Now, you and I then know that it, whatever the apothem is, the radius would be twice the size. The radius of this will be double the apothem. And this half of a side here, half of the side, would be the apothem times root 3. So knowing that we're in an equilateral, knowing that the radius and apothem form a right triangle that's a 30, 60, 90 in this uh, layout, helps us to find things. Over here, this square, the radius is here, the apothem is here. Well, you know in a square that the diagonals intersect at 90 degrees, so when I drop this down, that 90 degree angle gets cut in half to be 45 forming a 45-45 right triangle. And what that would mean is that the apothem is actually equal to half of the side. So if I know the apothem is 3, then this side is 6. Um, I also know that the apothem to the radius, I would multiply by root 2, because that's the relationship in the 45-45-90. Finally, in the uh, hexagon, uh, when you take 360 and divide by 6, you get 60. And so when that triangle is cut in half by the apothem, uh, here's your apothem, here's your radius, you get a 30, 60, 90 triangle, but in this uh, layout. And so uh, your apothem here happens to be the long side. 
So it is a little bit trickier in terms of you divide by a root 3 to get this and then double to get your radius. And so again, you're still though in a 30, 60, 90 triangle and you can use that relationship. In all of the other regular polygons, the, the decagon, the octagon, the angle, the central angle when cut in, in half does not form a special right triangle. And so you would just use trigonometry uh, with that angle, whatever it is, to find uh, the radius, the apothem, uh, the needed information to solve it. I'll show you one of those uh, under the Elmo. Let's go take a look at this again now. Regular polygons, as we just talked about, are kind of the cool group in the family here. And we already mentioned what center radius and apothem are. But again, they get their names because um, any regular polygon can be placed inside of a circle. And so... Because of that, you can use terms like center and radius and so on. And again, the idea of a center, obviously, is the exact equidistant location to each of those vertices, which is possible for all regular polygons. And then, uh, and then you have a radius, which, of course, is out from center to vertex. And again, the, the reason that that's possible is that there is a circle that can... Um, circumscribe any regular polygon and so it makes sense to call that a radius from center out. The word apothem is new to most uh, students though for sure and it's from center uh, the distance from center to one of the sides which is always perpendicular would be the apothem. Now the key to this is really understanding three of the main figures um, the equilateral triangle um, so here's your radius, uh, here's your apothem, and then this is the original side. Now because when you break a, an equilateral into its three uh, triangles, you break 360 up into 120s. And then when you drop the apothem, you create a 60, 90, 30 triangle. And you and I, in the previous time, uh, covered uh, the relationship here. Um, between these. So first of all, this is half of the original size. This is called your apothem. This is called your radius. But you and I, uh, and this is half of the side of that uh, guy, right? There it is there. But we know more about that particular shape. Uh, we know that the, the radius then has to be twice the size of the apothem because it's it's a 30 60 90 triangle and we know that if i take the apothem and i multiply it by um, root three i get half of whatever the original size was and so on the same relationship uh kind of is found a similar kind of relationship is found in the square uh, here is our radius here's our apothem and it forms, because we break a 90 degree angle up into two equal angles, it makes a 45-45 right triangle and provides um, more of that kind of special right triangle relationships. So actually we learn here that the apothem will be exactly the same as half of the side length. Those have to be the same. And we know that the radius will be root two times bigger than our apothem or than half of its size. Um, you can see that the apothem is equal to the half of a side because if I went this way with it, if I stood it across, you could see there'd be half of the side and there would be the other half. The other one that forms a special right triangle uh, relationship inside is the hexagon. And this time you're breaking a 60 degree angle in half, making the 30 degree up here in, in, the, in the central angle area. And so its apothem is the long side of that, the half of the side of the uh, hexagon is here, the short side, and then the radius is actually the hypotenuse. So let's show you how we use kind of that knowledge to solve some problems and come up with a formula. Um, one way to think about getting a formula here 
is to think about just finding the area of the six um, the six triangles. Now the way you can find the six triangles would be one half its base times its height side times a potham. And basically to do that um, six times, right? To multiply that by six in this case. Now let's move things around a little bit. Let me pull out the one half. So there's the one half. I'm going to write 6 times S times A, right? 6 times, this is all multiplication, so it's, I can move things around. And notice what 6 S's are. 6 S's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 S can be changed to be the value of a perimeter. So if I multiply the perimeter times the apothem and divide by 2, I'm going to get that answer. Now, in this case, the perimeter is six sides. Let's see if that works over here. So here's a triangle. Uh, it would be one-half uh, S, this is the base, times the height, the base times the height. And I would multiply by three because there, there would be three of those triangles. And again, if I move things around a little bit, I put the three beside the S times the A. This is the perimeter of this shape, isn't it? So it's uh, one side, a second side, and a third side. So we actually learned a nice little shortcut, if you like it, to find these guys is one-half the apothem times the perimeter of that particular shape. It's a nice way to solve what are fairly complex guys. So let's show you how to do one. Let's see if it, if it works for you. So um, this says it has a radius of 6. So here's our radius of 6. Find the area of the regular um, equilateral triangle. So you and I know that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle uh, in its position here. This is a 6, so half of that would be 3, and this would be 3 root 3. So. Um, my side, if this is, so my apothem is 3, this is 3 root 3, this would also be 3 root 3. So here it is, 1 half the apothem, 3, times the perimeter. Now that would be 6 root 3, times 1, 2, 3. Right? So this is calculating my perimeter, this is my apothem. And so all that's just multiplying together and dividing by two. So let's see. Um, I'm gonna let's see. To divide, you get let's see, 27 root three centimeters squared. And let me make sure three, three, three. Yep, there is the area of that. If you multiply all that out, you get 27 root three centimeters squared. Pretty cool. Let's do another one, just to show you, uh, again, the idea. This says I have a side of 8, so this time I know the side, which makes this 4 and 4. I know that in this shape, that inner part is a 30, 60, 90 in this position with a 4 here. So my apothem in this case would be 4 root 3. So this is easy enough. 1 half the apothem times the perimeter. Now the perimeter in this case would be a side of 8 times 6 of those. So this is my perimeter calculation. There's my apothem. And so I get 48 times 2 is 96 root 3 centimeters. Now just to show you what happens if it's not the square, the equilateral, or the uh, hexagon. You basically have to use trigonometry to do it. And um, I will kind of set this up. Well, I'll go quick here. I think I can pull this off for you. So they give me some things here. They tell me it's a regular pentagon. So 72 degrees, that's 360, divided by 5 is 72. So I know that that main, main angle, central angle, 72. But when I put this down, it becomes 36. So I'm looking at a 36 degree angle, not 30, not 60, not 45. And the side length is 8, so this would be a 4. 
So I first have to find this uh, apothenon, and then I can go from here. This is the tangent relationship. The tangent of 36 is opposite 4 over adjacent. And I can solve this uh, just by doing the, uh, the trig uh, value here. So 4 divided by the tangent of 36. All right, let me just make sure that uh, I've got this in the right mode. I, actually, I don't, so let me get it in degree mode. Here we go. 4 divided by the tangent of 36 is a, a value of 5.51 when I round it. Now I'm ready to go. So I know my formula is 1 half the apophthegm, 5.51 times the perimeter, which is in this case 8, a side of 8, and there are 5 of those sides. So I am going to multiply my apothem times 5 times 8 divided by 2. I get approximately, this is an exact answer, um, but it's close. Okay, so I had to do a little trigonometry to find one of my pieces of the puzzle and then I could solve it from there. Some real good stuff here.